All right, good Tuesday morning, everyone. It is time to talk about the markets with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. And Jim, Intel, uh, Under Armour CEOs leaving Trump's council. Yeah, Brian Krasanich and uh, Kevin Plank joining uh, Mr. Frazier. Uh, these are people of, uh, 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 who recognize their various stakeholders, and I think that uh, Mr. Krasanich uh, uh, saying, listen, the politics are too much, and uh, Kevin Plank making a, a statement. Kevin Plank has a lot of endorse, endorsees who are ups, upset that he had been committed to begin with. I mean, uh, President Trump's a polarizing figure. Uh, to me, I would love to have the input to President Trump. I don't regard that as an appeasement position. I don't regard that as being that I have no conscience. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, my old friend Larry Summers has a piece which says, how can you look at your kids? Um, I would tell my kids, listen, I have to have influence. I have a view. If you don't like that, I, uh, I understand. But I think that to be in the room and to try to influence the president is more important than the statement. But that's my own view. I've not been asked to come down, but I do think that, uh, that I understand anybody who wants to quit because there are, he, there are many things that he's doing that would upset one or, uh, or more of your stakeholders, whether it be your shareholders, whether it be uh, the people who work with you, whether it be uh, your customers. And so it's a matter of conscience plus those three. And I think that a lot of people don't need this uh, and want to make a statement. Uh, in particular, the idea that he did not call out Nazis uh, is rather extraordinary, uh, and then he, but he did say it yesterday. Uh, but it, uh, I'm not a, a CEO, and I have my constituency is one of, of, of watching and, and offering analysis. And I think that, uh, that I thought the president made a cheap shot at Ken Frazier about uh, price of drugs, but immediately on Twitter, people say, hey, listen, all his drugs are too expensive, and he advertises them, they don't really work. I mean, there is fault everywhere. Uh, you cannot, there isn't a CEO in the country who makes anything that you could not find fault in. But I do say that there are people of consciences, uh, people might not want to work with this man. Uh, I adopted more of a Jeff Immelt view, which is that if you can influence him, that's better than just closing the door on him. Because once you close the door on this man, it's never going to open again because that's the way he is. I think there's a lot of fear of him. I recognize that. Uh, I think CEOs, if you had a big defense contract, I think you'd be fearful, but because there, he has always expressed a desire um, to uh, uh, hammer uh, those who disagree with him. It, it, he's a different kind of president, and I think that people have to recognize that he's a different kind of president. And when you sign on with him, you, you are uh, accepting a lot of behavior, and if you accept that behavior, then you're going to have to uh, live with it. Well, this is an important perspective. Jim, you speak to more CEOs than anyone. Well, I mean, I think a lot of CEOs I speak to are very fearful. Uh, they're fearful because of retribution. They're fearful because they want to run their business. And uh, they're fearful because they view their job as, as trying to work uh, not, you know, for their country, uh, for their shareholders, uh, for their stakeholders, uh, the, the, for their customers, uh, for their employees. And those are all things you have to juggle. And when you add this layer of the president, it's too much for some of them because uh, the some of their stakeholders just think it's outrageous to work with this man at all. Uh, and I, I look, I get all sides of this. I mean, the president wants to be in touch with CEOs. The CEOs sign on, uh, and that may be they sign on to some things that they regard as reprehensible, so then they uh, resign out of conscience. And I, I think that, that everyone has a right to do all these things. All right, Jim, let's move on to the markets. The real bright spot this morning, Home Depot reporting. What did you think? Stock is being killed. Yes. Uh, I think that there are people who still believe. Someone tweeted on my column that they used to get uh, shop all Amazon contractor. Now they, all Home Depot, now they get 30%. Uh, Frank Blake in an interview uh, with an Atlanta paper, he's the former CEO, called Amazon the uh, Death Star. Uh, I do think that no matter what Home Depot does or says, people think that they are uh, a, a target of Amazon. So therefore, if you're a target of Amazon, your stock doesn't get a 22 multiple. It gets reduced. But Jim, as a gardener yourself, would you want to buy gardening equipment from Amazon or Home Depot? Um, I have bought gardening equipment online, uh, not from Amazon, but specialized gardening equipment that was not available at Home, available at Home Depot. Probably 80% of my garden spend is with Home Depot. 
Uh, but they do have the same plants as everybody else. I mean, they, they use a company that has a that Scott's Miracle that Scott's uh, has a uh, owns some of, and everybody who does plants planting like I do knows that you'll see the label and you know that most of them get the same. Um, I happen to have a, a particular Home Depot uh, in Riverhead that has always been fabulous to me uh, and very fast checkout line as opposed to Lowe's where it's very slow and the line's long. Uh, I like their flats. Uh, I use them for everything I don't use for seed uh, other than some stuff that is for aisles I get from Union Square. But uh, then again, I mean, there is a lot of stuff in there that you could easily buy from Amazon. So I get it. Uh, contractors, I still think, pull up all the time with the pickups and buy stuff. It's like Costco. But your price earnings multiple goes down if you have something that can be Amazon. Mm. Or another retailer talk about TJX companies. You own it for the Harder trust. to be Amazon because they are the beneficiary of all the chaos in the brick and mortar world. Mm. They have historically been able to come underneath the prices of Amazon. Uh, most of these retailers today are saying, listen, we can compete with Amazon. The only people who compete with Amazon on price are off-price retailers, particularly TJX, because their strategy has always been to buy uh, the stuff that is uh, over inventoried and TJX is still putting up stores because there's strong demand. There's a, there's a, uh, a new uh, TJX store coming uh, next to me in Brooklyn uh, because there's demand. And I think that most of these companies do not have the demand to put up new stores. They're closing a lot of stores. That's not the case with TJX. Another retailer to talk about Coach reported uh, comps for... You know, I, I, look, I think that uh, Victor Luis, when he bought Kate Spade, said they're going to change the way that Kate Spade works. Uh, they did do that, and he added that that was going to be uh, negative for their uh, gross margins and negative for the short-term earnings period, and that kiboshed the stock. Uh, I think it could be an opportunity when it settles down. Another retail stock just getting killed today, Advanced Auto Parts. Yeah, you know, these are, I was going over with uh, my team for Action Alerts, and this is one of the reasons why we sold Snap-on. It's just too hard to own anything that's related to auto, auto parts, in part because the industry itself is stunned uh, that business is down. And it's not because of Amazon. Amazon's just moving into the business. They have not been able to pinpoint why business is so bad. I have been postulating that uh, people may not be keeping their cars as long as they trade them in because the uh, car's advancements have actually uh, been rather stark. Uh, collision avoidance, uh, you know, before a car uh, you could keep for 12 years. A a but now I think that what happens is the new cars have so many more advances that perhaps they're not being repaired as, uh, the older cars are not being repaired, they're being traded in. But everyone's postulating what's going on. No one seems to have the silver bullet of what's really happening there. I don't know. Hopefully, I'll listen to all the calls and be able to make a better judgment. Advanced Auto Parts was at one time a great growth stock. It no longer is, as is AutoZone, as is O'Reilly. They are no longer growth stocks. That's a great secular change that, that really snuck up on a lot of people. All right, moving to some analyst commentary. Jim, what did you make of Goldman's upgrade of GoPro? Well, there, I mean, they ate crow. They said, look, we underestimated their ability to be able to fix their capital structure uh, and that they have a new product that has historically moved the stock up. Uh, the stock was, uh, on a percentage basis, much lower. It's moved up. I, I, I Look, I understand why keep a sell on it is the way I looked at it. I thought it was the guy ate crow and moved on, and I think that's right. And Jim, I saw you mentioned wind resorts on Squawk in the Street. You know, there, um, that's a piece by Deutsche Bank, very fine analyst, noting that the palace is finally kicking in. This is something that those of us who follow Wynn has been, Steve Wynn has been saying, when this kicks in, it's gonna be huge. Uh, when he said that, initially, the stock was in the 50s and 60s, and he bought a lot of stock, because he has faith in himself. Uh, I love CEOs like that, I love Steve Wynn. All right, Jim, we'll wrap up as we always do with earnings to watch. We have another retailer, as we spoke about before, Target. Yeah, now Target's being softened, the stock is coming down. Uh, and that's very good news. Remember, they've been keeping their guidance low. Mm. That's also good news because the higher you keep your guidance, the more likely that you are going to overpromise. Uh, they've been practicing UPOD, which is what I taught the Eagles yes. to do. <laughs> and we broke the huddle by saying, UPOD, you need to underpromise in Philadelphia be, uh, and then overdeliver because they'll boo you. You need to underpromise in the land of retail and overdeliver because they'll boo you. I love that acronym. Thank you. <laughs> and then one more on my list, mm -hmm. Cisco Systems. Oh, okay, Cisco, uh, we sold Cisco um, for Action Alerts and took the gain. We wanted to raise some cash and we put the money in NVIDIA. 
Uh, and if NVIDIA comes down more, we will buy more NVIDIA. A good day for Everest. Thank you. <laughs> Jim Kramer, thank you thank so you. much. For more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head to thestreet.com.